Welcome to Don't Be Caged by Your Age, Amy. I'm so happy you're here to share your insights, stories, and pro-aging advice with our listeners. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me. What is your age and where do you hail from, Amy? Well, it's almost my birthday, and my birthday is in about a week, and I will be 65. Oh, Eight, my gosh. I know. Congratulations. Great. I'm recording this, listeners, right at the beginning of my favorite season, the Leo season. Yes. Yeah. So I love that Amy and I are both Leo goddesses. This is yes. so much fun. Yeah. So this will have an extra oomph because, you know, Leos bring glow everywhere they go. Oh. So. Amy, you are a seasoned and serial entrepreneur. Yeah. And I just love your background, but specifically, I love the story and I want to hear more about it of the wonderful bakery that you launched here in Boston at the tender age of 26. And it was called yeah. The Icing on the Cake. So this is back in 1986, folks. Women weren't launching hardly anything back in the 80s. Amy, what compelled you to do that? I want to hear all the details. Yeah, it's it's funny because it almost feels like if you gave me a lie detector test and said, you know, did you open this bakery? I would say no, because it feels like it was another lifetime ago. I mean, it was a long, long time ago and I was 26. So that's almost 40 years ago. I'm from uh, New York, Long Island, and I moved to Boston after college with my best friend. And it was a time that, I mean, I worked in, in an advertising agency and the only job I could get was as a secretary. And I had what I consider to be a very good college education, let's just say. And there I was, like I had to type 40 words a minute just to get the interview. And I was just like, hey, I got way more stuff than this. But anyway, so I became a secretary for an ad, an ad agency and I worked for about four years there, like really clawing my way up to the top. When men entered the ad agency from college, like I did, they came in two steps above. They were not typing. They were not answering phones. I mean, it's a very, very different world then. We had a lot of those recruitment companies, right, that yeah. would put you into those jobs, even temporary jobs. Yeah. So there you were working for someone else and trying to wrap your brain around this great college education that you worked so hard to earn. And now you're sitting there typing and taking orders from a male. How did you shift out of that? Well, I just kept saying, what else can I do? What more can I do? I had a, a woman boss that I went to Cornell and so did she. So she she was trying to pull me up too, okay. which was great. And I got to account executive, which was my whole goal. That was what I wanted. And then I was like, you know, this isn't really for me. But at the same time, simultaneously, I had always loved cake decorating, even as a little girl. And then while I was in in advertising, I took a cake decorating course in Cambridge. I had to take like two buses and walk to get there because I never car. And then I taught a cake decorating course at the Boston Center for Adult Education. So through all of that, I was bringing cakes into the agency, right? And people were saying, what do people say? Oh my God, you're so great. You should open a bakery. What do people say? That's what they say. No matter what you do, you bring in a shirt that you made. Oh my God, you should open up a seamstress. Store. Like it's so right. easy. Right. So I was like, I'm very much somebody who takes people's suggestions. So people kept saying and kept saying, and I was like, okay. So it was all cakes. I had started doing like a Friendly's restaurant for Friendly's. It was sculpted cakes. I mean, it was very unusual things. It wasn't like a cookie here and a croissant there. So I left the ad agency. They equipped me with like my business cards, the name of the business. Like there were a lot of things that they brought to me. And I, by my own, by myself, struck out. I was 26. I had dark hair and a ponytail and an icing on the cake t-shirt. And, and we ended up in like a little podunk off the beaten path place in Newton Corner and the mothers of the brides. And we did very sort of elegant cakes. Not, it wasn't the intent, but I made handmade icing flowers was like our trademark. Again, 1986. So, and they're beautiful anyway. So the mothers of the brides, they would come into the store for the wedding appointment. And there I was in my icing on the cake t-shirt and my jeans and my ponytail. And I'd say, hi, you know, I'm Amy. And the, the mother would always say, we would like to speak to the manager. You know, where is the owner? Where's right? the chef? I look so young. I look like I didn't know anything. And I would be like, I am the owner. 
And by the end of the appointment, after 45 minutes, they were like, what do you think, Amy? What's your advice? So anyway, long story short, I had that business for seven years and built it up to, a, I think, a very big business. We did corporate cakes. We did cakes for a thousand people. We did an anniversary at the aquarium. We did like a gigantic six foot by four foot Bay Bank card. If you remember way back, the Bay Bank card was blue and green and served a thousand people on Government Center Plaza. I mean, we did, it was like Cake Boss. We did big things and weddings and things. So anyway, in those seven years, I got married and I had my first child and I said, I want to be a stay-at-home mom now. And so I had the great, great fortune to sell my business to two of my employees. Oh, that's so they are wonderful. Still there. So the baby that I had is now 31, going on 32. And I only had the business for seven years. And so it's still going to do 25. Yes, it's going strong. They moved down the street to a bigger space. They're amazing. They did my daughter's wedding cake. I mean, they're amazing. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. It was so much work. There was so much to it. I was like, I will never again have a business that number one has a perishable product. And number two, you're selling it to people on the most important day of their lives. No pressure, right? Yeah. That was quite an accomplishment. Right, but you, you, absolutely. And of course, that fueled a lot of what you could feel capable to do as you move right. forward in life. I always like to ask my guests as they were progressing, you know, having children, moving into the 40s, doing all the things. I want to talk a little bit about, as you reflect back, what your perception of 65 looked like, 60s and 70s, <laughs> right. versus how you're looking at it today. Well, it's funny because my mother, I'm also writing a book, which I could talk about after, but my mother is turning 93 next week, actually. And she was 60 when I had this baby that, and then I sold this. And it's so funny at 65 to think like, you know, cause she seemed so much older to me. Right. right. You know, I was 33 when I had my daughter and, and she was there to help you. And as yeah, you got adjusted but, to being a mom. And yeah. I mean, I think what we have in our mind or what I had in my mind then as a 65 year old was like a little old lady. Right. We didn't have a lot of examples at our fingertips. There was no internet. You know, we didn't have all of this. There were no phones. There was no social media. We didn't have all these. You had TV and movies is all you hey, really had. We didn't have all these images, you know? No, and we had, who was the woman who owned the big hotel down in New York City? I mean, she was about the only example we had as far as, you know, a woman working past the age of 50 right. in it, whether a corporate or ownership position. This is amazing. Yeah. So you pl you were a phenomenal stay-at-home mom. You did all the things there. And I Well, what I did was I, I ended up having three children and there was a big age span. So talking about ageism, I had my third child when I was turning 42. I was almost 42, which doesn't seem old now, but then there was like a stamp on your file, advanced maternal age, high-risk OB. I mean, it was a big deal. And I was old. I mean, when I had that baby, all those mothers of those same age children were a full 10 years younger than me. So I was an old mother at that point, you know. But, and I'm right there with you. I had my first when I was 39 and my second when I was halfway through my 42nd year. And listeners, I have to tell you the positive side of that is everyone thought I was 10 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> did you see experience that too, Amy? Yeah. So I did do a lot of things, raise money for playgrounds. I mean, I did a lot of things that were not paid work, right? I mean, I was very involved in everything. And then when my youngest was in middle school and then I had a high school or in a college age girl, I became a health coach. So that was like 19, I mean, that was 2013. And I built a big health coach business, but it what was- does, What's a health coach? When you say health, what do you mean? Yeah. So I was under a nationwide company, a big, you know, umbrella company, and it was a weight loss and wellness. And that was very dear to me because I was an overweight teenager. So my father had died when I was in high school and I just got very heavy. Yeah. So, so I created, I had a business under this big umbrella of a big- Understood. Nation company. Right. And, I, and I did a lot and I had hundreds of clients and coaches and all these things, you know, I did the things. But what I love about that though, is you built up understanding what coaching looks and feels like yeah. under someone else's umbrella. Yeah. A and that can be a great way to get your sea legs Yeah, when you want to go into something that I'm feeling you were called to do, right? 
and and I loved the business development end of it because I am an entrepreneur and I loved the coaching end of it and and I really built a business. Then at that point, I did that for six or seven years and five years ago, I started Drive Your Life, which is how you and I connected. And mm -hmm. so I really wanted something that was my own that I had created. I really wanted to focus on helping women. And it was actually my older daughter, that first baby, but then she was 26, now 31. And she was like, what are you going to do? Like, what do you want to do? Kind of like finger in the face. Like, what is Amy Goober going to do? Who do you want to serve? I mean, she was really, it was like almost reverse parenting. And I was like, I, you know, I don't know, but I, I figured Amy, it out. I have, I have goosebumps from yeah. that. Yay, oldest daughter for doing That's that. Because what she yeah. saw was a woman who has so much talent and drive and ambition. And listeners, you know what I'm always saying? Ambition is ageless, okay? Mm -hmm. And she saw that in you, but you might have yeah. been held back by your own indoctrinated beliefs. I'm about to turn 60. What do you mean? Yeah. And who's going to look at me and listen to me? What yes. is Drive Your Life? I just love that name. What does, yeah, what's so, involved? So I had decided that I wanted to help women and that when I looked around, and I don't know if you agree with this or you listeners agree with this, but I really believe that as women, we're very naturally other oriented. It is easy for us to think about and care about and love and share resources and really focus on other people. And it's harder for us to focus on ourselves. I mean, that's just harder. So I created a program called Drive Your Life. And it, it's I'm all about the concreteness and the results. Like, I don't want to have women meeting on Zoom and we just talk. And at the end of the program, six weeks later, they say, Oh, that was fun. I'm all about you started here and now you're here. Like, it's really important to me. So I created milestones, baby. So I created a five step process to get into action. And part of the process is each woman chooses one thing that they want to do that they've been talking about for six months or more. Uh, yep, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Yep, I'm going to clean out that attic. Yes, I'm going to meet more people, whatever the Yes, I'm going to launch that podcast. Right. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. And I give them a way to do it. And it's a virtual program. They're in their PJs if they want to be. And they make great connections with the other women. I've done it around 17 or 16, 17 times. But now I'm doing it once a year and it's coming up actually in September. And so I started doing that and I loved that. And I saw great results. I mean, really. Women literally went from here all the way to here. I have people say, oh my God, I did the D-R-I-V-E. It's an acronym for the word drive. I did that for this and I did that for that. So it's, it's uh, reusable. It's, uh, it's a lifetime tool you've given them to progress right. in any area because we, get, we reinvent, we reimagine our dreams and our opportunities and purposes. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. So that's coming up. And then there's a part two to it called Road to Success. And then I pair the women up and they can continue or they don't have to, right? You have to give them a chance to see what it is. I pair them up. They have action partners. It's a whole thing about accountability and action. So that's what launched me into all the things that I do now because I did this drive your life, you know, and I connected with all these women. And somebody said, you know, what about a retreat or trips for women? So I said, Okay. And, and it was during on the edge of COVID and I ran a women's retreat to Arizona and then I ran another retreat to Marco Island, Florida. And then someone said, well, could you just do women's trips? I mean, so I just was like, okay. So now I have a whole brand called Wandering Women and I run women's trips. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Amy, you exemplify Tina Fey's quote, just say yes and figure it out later. Right. Open the, uh, open the parachute on the way down. I mean, you learn by doing, I learn by doing, and I am a lifelong learner and I do research things. And this is what I encourage my women to do, my, the women I work with or the women mm. I travel with to do is take small steps and try something. If, a lot of women in my stage are looking for more connections and more right. friends, right? right? Their circle shrinks, but they don't know how to do it because you know why? We're rusty. Not only that, you do become a little more particular. And selective about who you're going to spend your time with because right. life has gotten a little shorter and we become a little fussier about that connection. So I love that you're bringing women together. And when you were talking about for most of our first 50 years, we are taking care of others. Mm -hmm. It's just been our nature, but also been our indoctrination. So when you said that, uh, I could hear 
listeners going, oh, hell yeah, I know what that life that's like, mm -hmm. and I am guilty of that as well. And so listeners, I'd love to know your thoughts about the tools, right? So often we are told, oh, here, just go do this or here, just go do that. But without the true roadmap and the milestones that help you go from A to B, and then you check in, get mm -hmm. some gas, get fueled yeah. up. Right. And then see where you're going next. But not only that, like having that tool, that process mm -hmm. so that you can apply it to different parts of your life. I think this is so invaluable, Amy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. And it's so funny because I have other offshoot programs. We have an accountability group weekly. And one of the women that's in it was a Drive Your Life participant. And she had a big challenge coming up, a really difficult conversation. And she was looking for one of the documents that we did in the program, because that is about realizing what you have inside. What are the skills and traits you have from what you've already done? And, and not just your work resume, but you know, if you're a single parent, if you're a parent at all, if you've ever moved, I mean, you think of all the things that we go through, we, I try to attach that to the skills and traits that it took to get through it. Right. Because nobody comes in the middle of the night and slurps your traits out. Right. So if let's say a woman of our age is trying to figure out how she's going to meet new people, but she feels shy and she's uncertain, mm -hmm. you know, I would say, hey, weren't you in the PTA when, you know, your kids are in school? Did you go to camp? You know, did you meet your neighbors? You are friendly. You are outgoing, whatever it is. And I have them prove it to themselves because it, it means nothing if I say it. It only. Well, means and they, also. You know. That accountability factor is huge. So there's a wonderful organization, listeners, called meetup.com. Right. And I talk about it all the time because yeah. you can go in there wherever you are in the world and find something going on that you may, even if you're shy, you might be able to just go in and just say, oh, I'll, I'll go in for 10 minutes, yeah. whatever, to get yourself out, out there. But what I love about what you do and your group does, Amy, is that Someone says, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to that meetup or I'm going to go to that event or I'm going to volunteer over here. And everybody's going to be sitting there looking at you and going, okay, let us know when. Right. Exactly. And exactly. then take the a photo. Week, right. The next week we say, how did you do with this segment or that segment? And I do run two meetup groups. I run a wandering women travel meetup group and I have an empty nester moms meetup group. So we do dinners and lunches and things to connect. I'm all about the other things that I do now are all about connecting women with each other and like enriching their lives. Right. Oh, know? that's, that is so wonderful. And folks who are listening who are empty nesters or cat ladies, as they sometimes get referred to negatively, if you are at a stage and age of your life, and you're trying to go out, wow, all those built in systems that were there for me to find friendship and connections are no longer there. You've got to go and connect with Amy. Amy, what is your website? So it's just my name. It's amygoober.com. A-M-Y-G-O-O-B-E-R.com. And all the trips that I run are on there. I also run women's events, in-person events with speakers as a cool uh, experiential piece to it, an educational piece to it, you know, these one-day events. So, you know, there's a lot of, and most women sign up alone for all these things. They sign yeah. up for the trip because they don't have anyone to travel with and they leave with 12 friends. They go to the event, they don't know anyone, and they leave. We, we eat lunch together. It's all these things. It's an easy way right. to make connections and feel like you had you did something for yourself that day. Even if it's just one day, that's still pretty good. It's experiential. And experiential right. is very profound. When you are shoulder to shoulder with someone going through an experience together, you create a connection that is so valuable and so memorable. And Amy, you are the facilitator. You are the glue that's bringing everyone together. And I love that you created these two powerful groups. I encourage listeners all the time, if you don't see the community you want to be part of, create it. And I raised my hand at that point because in March, I launched the New England Podcasters Group because I wanted to get together with podcasters. Indie yeah. podcasters are so much fun. and exciting. We didn't have a group. Nobody was doing anything. Why not me? Right? right. And of course it's scary. And I'm not a Pied Piper. I'm the one who always sits there and goes, what if you throw a party and no one shows up? That's, <laughs> that's my mentality. But I just thought, well, let's see what happens. And when you let yourself off the hook, as far as how it's supposed to look 
and just go with how it's supposed to feel and that connection. It's amazing what you can create and talk a little bit about that, Amy. I know you're a go-getter. You're, of course, you're a Leo, so you're an extrovert. Our batteries get juiced and refilled whenever we see anybody, even if it's the checkout person, the grocery store, right? Exactly. Yeah. But for most people, it's not like that. So what did you do that helped you create these communities and these groups that you overcame any feelings of what if nobody shows up? Right. Well, I think you have to do small steps first, as we mentioned before. So, you know, when I have women that say, I don't have any friends or there's nobody to do anything with, I really have them do one step at a time. Look at you, look in your phone. Find somebody, one person each week. I mean, that gives you seven days to do it that you want to reach out to. Somebody from your far, you know, your high school days or somebody you met three days ago. And I try to have them do things slowly, like one step at a time. And then look, some of this is outside of your comfort zone, right? I was just talking to a woman two days ago that was talking about coming on a trip that we're doing in the winter. And she said, I've never done this, right? I've never gone anywhere alone. I've never traveled with people I don't know. And I gave her all the information. And I said, here's all these testimonial videos from other women. Don't take it from me. But what I said to her is every single person starts out saying this is a big leap of faith. So it's sort of like be afraid, but do it anyway. So you feel the feels. This makes me uncomfortable. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not sure how this is going to go. But what is the alternative? The alternative is you stay home. Right? Isolated. Yep. That is the alternative. So sometimes the alternative is worse than feeling anxious or uncomfortable. And it's not going to kill you. It is not going to kill you to go to a meetup dinner. I always say to the women, you know, look, you know, and they all say, I'm so happy I came and they exchange phone numbers, you know, and they're so happy. And I say, I'm proud of you for coming because what was the alternative? Another night home. You got plenty of nights to be home. Don't miss an opportunity to meet other women. And Amy, I'm just going to give you the credits. Let's roll the credits listeners for Amy right now, because you create the welcoming, safe Mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Folks. You I, are I really try to. I really, yeah. really, I really, really try to make people feel comfortable. We were going through something, you know, posting on Facebook, and I said, yeah. you know, my my husband says that my superpower is that I can like make friends with a tree. Like this is what he says. But these women were piping in and saying, we think, you know, I think your superpower is that you make people feel comfortable, even if you don't know them and they don't know you. Which I didn't really see myself as, but I do. I really do try wherever I am to make women feel like they're glad they're there. That's right. it. Right. That's right. it. That they're happy they came for whatever they got out of it. So there's so much out there. And, you know, opportunity is what you view it as and what you see it as. And so I think that's really important is we talk ourselves out of things all the time. You would never cancel on your daughter, your grandchild, your best friend, but you cancel on your all the time. Women sign up for things and they cancel. That's canceling on yourself. That's deciding that you'd rather stay home and watch TV, right? Then do something a little outside of your comfort zone. And so cancel on yourself. And, And what women have trouble with is turning the focus back onto themselves and thinking about what do I want and am I gonna go do it? If anyone asks them to do anything, they will drop whatever they're doing to make dinner for the neighbor that doesn't feel well, right? Right? We do these things. So don't stop doing that. But what do you want? Ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself like you would a good friend. And how can I help you? What would make you happy? And Amy, you're absolutely right. The uncertainty, the being uncomfortable, the shy. And again, you and I, like your husband said, I mean, my favorite thing is to walk into a room filled with strangers. I, it's just so much fun and I can't wait to do it. Most people are not like that. And it can be really intimidating and really hard. And it's due to all the years of not only society judging us, our people in our lives judging us, but the judgment we put on ourselves. Right. You know, we might not look good enough to be out. We might not this. There's all right. these limiting beliefs that prevent us from going out and making those connections. 
just go to the farmer's market and have conversations with each of the booth owners. What if he's not here? Right. That can warm you up to how do you enter a space where you don't know anyone? Yeah, that's good practice. Those things are all good practice. And I think I just think it's very important. And maybe it isn't broadening your circle. Maybe that isn't your thing that you really want. But whatever it is you do want that you've been talking about over and over again, what is the very first step? Like, I am a big fan of, you know, niching it down to small steps. What's the first step? And the first step should always take no more than 30 minutes. The first step is not, I'm going to clean out my closet. That is not the first step. The first step is I'm going to open the door of my closet and I'm going to go through my shoes. And when the 30 minute timer goes off, I'm going to close my closet door and leave. Right. So you make yourself a promise. I'm just going to do this for 30 minutes. You can do anything for 30 minutes. Right. I'm just going to do it for 30 minutes. And you and but you keep your promise. Even if you're on a roll, you don't keep doing it. You said, well, I told myself 30 minutes. Ding, ding, ding. Now I'm going to go do X, Y, Z. But I did the 30 minutes and then you come back. So always start with a small step that doesn't seem hard because it's important to build your confidence and be like, check. Check. Yeah, right. And, you know, so often this, of course, goes to weight lifting or right? doing any kind of exercise. So many people don't do it because they think they have to devote an hour to it. Go do it for five minutes, 10 minutes. Or as Amy said, set the timer for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. because what happens is you become in alignment with integrity with yourself. Right. You meet a commitment with yourself and that becomes a habit of meeting that commitment. And I'm so grateful that you shared what a small step looks like. It yeah. feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, women think that they can do everything. And the other key is ask for help. So this, this if do I have a minute to talk about the concept? Absolutely. Because listeners know I'm always talking about interdependence, not yeah. independence. So I'm writing a book. I mean, it's not ready yet, but soon about the life lessons that my mother has shared throughout her life. She's turning 93 next week. And she was a young widow, as I told you, my father died when I was young, and she went back to social work school and she started a whole bereavement center. In those days, in the late 1970s, nobody, there was no support for this. There was no, no grief support. So anyway, she did that and then went on to help hundreds of 9-11 widows because she was her, she was, her home office was about an hour from Manhattan. So it's a whole story. But the reason why I brought it up is that you know, one of the one of the lessons I'll give you a little spoiler alert is don't be afraid to ask for help. Women do not like to ask for help because why? Because we, we don't want to impose on anyone. We don't want to ask a favor. And then there's the flip side is we can do it. We don't need any help. Right. They're like carrying babies, cooking dinner, folding laundry. You know, so it's important to ask for help. And my what I say, my part of it is. It's a win-win because don't you like helping other people? And doesn't that feel good? So if I ask Andy a favor, right, and she does it, it helps me and she feels good. So start asking for help. That's really the, does that and, make sense? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And here is something I want all the listeners to take away with them. Say this to yourself anytime you can, especially you women. It's so easy for me to receive. Right. It's so easy for me to receive. It's so easy for me to receive. Make it your mantra mm -hmm. all day long right. because we are great givers, but there's something like we've got this barrier to entry for, for receiving. You need to open up and let people do for you. Oh, Amy, this is so wonderful. You are the gift that keeps on giving. I, I love how you are serving the world with all of these opportunities for women to grow and glow in life, to have a more enriching life, just because, listeners, the clock strikes midnight on a milestone age does not mean you are done. As Cindy Hopper always says, it's not over till it's over. And to be able to do groups with Amy, who is going to facilitate, who's going to prompt you, who's going to hold you accountab accountable, and also give you community around whatever it is that you want to grow in 
This is so valuable. Amy, please tell everyone how they can work with you, find you, sign up with you, all the details. Yeah, it's all on my website. It's amyguber.com. My name, A-M-Y-G-O-O-B-E-R.com. And everything really is on there. The Drive Your Life program is going to open up probably the end of August for the September group. We have a women's trip to Cancun coming up in February, which has only been out for about a week and has gained a lot of traction. And then our next women's event, Better Together, is coming up in November. So you've got plenty of time to do that, or you can jump into uh, Facebook groups. Or right. And I saw, address, you know, I well, saw folks raving about the Women Better Together event. Is that yeah, what yes. it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, so yeah. wonderful to, how you are building community and helping folks build community by being the catalyst. Thank you. Yeah. Listeners, please follow Amy everywhere she goes. I'm going to have all the links. What's your Instagram handle? It's amygoober.driveyourlife. Okay. Over. Yep. And Great. Facebook, it's Amy Goober. And, uh, and folks can connect yeah, with you Amy on LinkedIn. Yeah. But connect yeah. with LinkedIn everywhere you are because you are making a huge impact. And I am so grateful for your time and for your presence today. And listeners, I want to know what your thoughts are. Hop onto our Instagram feed, LinkedIn, Facebook whatever is easiest, or you can tap that mic button on the website of Don't Be Caged by Your Age and let us know. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Amy. I know she will be happy to hear from you and guide you to wherever you need to be. And please remember, listeners, I know I end every podcast with this, but it's an important reminder that you have so much more to give. It's time to get off the couch and start thriving after 65. Start connecting. Start being visible. Do not let those internalized ageist beliefs prevent you from pursuing a new dream, even if you don't know what that dream is or a new opportunity. Find out what fuels your passion, what suits your personality. And who knows, you may end up filling your pocketbook with that as well and making money. Amy, again, thank you so much for joining me today for this delicious conversation. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Until next time, everyone, I'm wishing you a delicious day everywhere you glow. Cheers from Boston. I'm so grateful you carved out time to tune in and grab the gems from this delicious conversation. Be sure to hop on over to Don't Be Caged by Your Age on LinkedIn or Instagram to share your thoughts about ageism and unretirement. Because in this space, your age doesn't define you, it refines you. If you are inspired by a story you hear, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe, share, rate, and review the podcast. To receive an alert whenever a new show is posted, please join the Don't Be Caged by Your Age newsletter. Every month, you'll receive links to the podcast and helpful resources for creating possibilities for your unretirement days. Thank you for tuning in. I am so excited to hear how you found ways to thrive after 65. Waving from Boston. Cheers. Cheers.